Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you, dear viewers. Welcome to a journey that transcends time and space, a journey into the lives of the noble prophets in Islam. In this series, we'll embark on a profound exploration, drawing wisdom from the Quranic verses and hadiths that illuminate their stories. I invite you to join me on this enlightening journey as we delve into the timeless narratives of those chosen by Allah to guide and inspire humanity. As we begin, it's crucial to understand the significance of studying the lives of the prophets. Quran itself is a divine revelation, a source of guidance for mankind. Embedded within its verses are the narratives of prophets who faced trials, exhibited unwavering faith, and delivered messages of profound wisdom. Through this series, we aim to unlock the treasures hidden within these stories, seeking inspiration and lessons that resonate across generations. Our journey is not merely a historical exploration. It's an invitation to reflect on the universal truths conveyed by the prophets. Their stories are not confined to the past. They are living lessons that have the power to transform our present and shape our future. As we unravel their narratives, we'll discover threads of guidance, resilience, compassion, and unwavering devotion to Allah. The prophets in Islam are not distant figures. They are exemplars, guides, and sources of inspiration for our lives today. Through the lens of the Quran and the Hadiths, we'll witness their struggles, triumphs, and the profound impact they had on, on the communities they served. Each prophet's story is unique, yet collectively, they form a tapestry of divine guidance, weaving through the fabric of time. Our exploration will be guided by the verses of the Quran, the holy book that serves as a comprehensive guide for all aspects of life. We'll also draw from the hadiths, the sayings and actions of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who is not only the final messenger, but also the embodiment of the Quranic teachings. As we delve into each prophet's story, we'll encounter moments of joy, sorrow, challenge, and triumph. Their lives are not isolated narratives, but interconnected chapters in the grand book of divine wisdom. Through our discussions, we'll strive to extract the essence of their teachings, discern the universal principles they embody, and apply their wisdom to our contemporary lives. Before we conclude this introduction, let's remember that this journey is not a solitary one. It's a collective exploration, and your participation is integral. Share your thoughts, reflections, and questions as we navigate through the lives of the prophets. Together, let's create a space for dialogue, understanding, and spiritual growth. May this series be a source of enlightenment, inspiration, and transformation. May the stories of the prophets illuminate our hearts and guide us on the path of righteousness. Thank you for joining me on this profound journey. Let's begin our series, Journey Through the Prophets. Today, our exploration takes us to the dawn of humanity, unraveling the captivating story of the first prophet, Adam alayhi salam. As we delve into the Quranic verses and hadiths that detail his creation, residence in paradise, and the profound incident of the forbidden tree, we discover timeless lessons that echo through the corridors of human history. In the introduction, we set the stage for our exploration, recognizing the importance of studying the lives of the prophets. These narratives transcend mere historical accounts. They are gateways to wisdom, guidance, and profound reflections on the human experience. Our journey begins with the divine crafting of Adam from clay, a process animated by the word kun or be of Allah. This masterful creation establishes Adam as the first human being, the first prophet, and the progenitor of humanity. It invites us to contemplate the intricacy of our own existence and the divine craftsmanship that brought us into being. Our exploration then transports us to the paradisiacal realms described in the Quran. Gardens adorned with rivers, fruits, and the blissful existence of Adam and Hawa beckon us to ponder the beauty of paradise and the spiritual harmony it represents. It's a glimpse into a state of perfection, a state we long to return to. However, the narrative takes a pivotal turn as we confront the forbidden tree. The verses of Surah al-Baqarah narrate the moment when Satan, through deceit, led Adam and Hawa to taste the forbidden fruit. This incident serves as a profound lesson on the consequences of disobedience, the subtle tactics of the adversary, and the inherent vulnerability of human beings. Now let's read the English translation of some of the Quranic verses where Prophet Adam alayhi salam is mentioned. Surah al-Baqarah, 230-39. Verse 30, when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I will make upon the earth a successive authority. They said, will you place upon it one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood? While we declare your praise and sanctify you, Allah said, Indeed, I know that which you do not know. Verse 31. 
and he taught Adam the names, all of them. Then he showed them to the angels and said, Inform me of the names of these, if you are truthful. Verse 32. They said, Exalted are you, we have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Indeed, it is you who is the knowing, the wise. Verse 33. He said, O Adam, inform them of their names. And when he had informed them of their names, he said, Did I not tell you that I know the unseen, aspects of the heavens and the earth, and I know what you reveal and what you have concealed? Verse 34. And when we said to the angels, Prostrate to Adam, and they prostrated, except for Iblis, he refused and was arrogant and became of the disbelievers. Verse 35. And we said, O Adam, dwell, you and your wife, in paradise and eat therefrom in ease and abundance from wherever you will. But do not approach this tree, lest you be among the wrongdoers. Verse 36. But Satan caused them to slip out of it and remove them from that condition in which they had been. And we said, Go down, all of you, as enemies to one another, and you will have upon the earth a place of settlement and provision for a time. Verse 37. Then Adam received from his Lord some words, and he accepted his repentance. Indeed, it is he who is the accepting of repentance, the merciful. Verse 38. We said, Go down from it, all of you. And when guidance comes to you from me, whoever follows my guidance, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Verse 39. And those who disbelieve and deny our signs, those will be companions of the fire. They will abide therein eternally. Surah Sa'ad, 38, 71 to 88. Verse 71. When your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I am creating a human being from clay, from molded mud. Verse 72. So when I have proportioned him and breathed into him of my created soul, then fall down to him in prostration. Verse 73. So the angels prostrated, all of them entirely. Verse 74. Except Iblis. He was arrogant and became among the disbelievers. Verse 75. Allah said, O Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating to that which I created with my hands? Were you arrogant then? Or were you already among the haughty? Verse 76. He said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay. Verse 77. Allah said, Then get out of paradise, for indeed, you are expelled. Verse 78. And indeed, upon you is my curse until the day of recompense. Verse 79. He said, My Lord, then reprieve me until the day they are resurrected. Verse 80. Lala said, So indeed, you are of those reprieved. Verse 81. Until the day of the time well known. Verse 82, Iblis said, By your might, I will surely mislead them all. Verse 83, Allah said, Except among them your chosen servants. Verse 84, Allah said, The truth is my oath, and the truth I say. Verse 85, Iblis said, By your might, I will surely mislead them all. Verse 86, Allah said, So be it, and you are of those made reprieve. Verse 87, until the day of the time well known. Verse 88, Thy Iblis said, By your might, I will surely mislead them all. Surah Taha 20, 115-123. Verse 115, And we had already taken a promise from Adam before, but he forgot, and we found not in him determination. Verse 116, And mention, when we said to the angels, Prostrate to Adam. And they prostrated, except for Iblis. He refused. Verse 117. So we said, O Adam, indeed this is an enemy to you and to your wife. Then let him not remove you from paradise so you would suffer. Verse 118. Indeed, it is promised for you not to be hungry therein or be unclothed. Verse 119. And indeed, you will not be thirsty therein or be hot from the sun. Verse 120. Then Satan whispered to him. He said, O Adam, shall I direct you to the tree of eternity and possession that will not deteriorate? Verse 121. And Adam and his wife ate of it, and their private parts became apparent to them, and they began to fasten over themselves from the leaves of paradise. And Adam disobeyed his Lord and erred. Verse 122. Then his Lord chose him, 
and turned to him in forgiveness and guided him. Verse 123. Allah said, Descend from paradise, all your descendants, being enemies to one another. And if there should come to you guidance from me, then whoever follows my guidance will neither go astray in the world nor suffer in the hereafter. Surah Al-Araf, 711-25 Verse 11 And we have certainly created you, O mankind, and given you human form. Then we said to the angels, Prostrate to Adam. So they prostrated, except for Iblis. He was not of those who prostrated. Verse 12 Allah What prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? Satan said, I am better than him. Created me from fire and created him from clay. Verse 13, Allah said, Descend from paradise, for it is not for you to be arrogant therein. So get out, indeed, you are among the debased. Verse 14, Satan said, Reprieve me until the day they are resurrected. Verse 15, Allah said, Indeed, you are of those reprieved. Verse 16, Satan said, Because you have put me in error, I will surely sit and wait for them on your straight path. Verse 17, then it is for me to forgive whom I will and have mercy upon him. But for the wrongdoers, I will surely make hell a sufficient punishment. Verse 18. And O Muhammad, tell them the story of the two sons of Adam in truth when they both offered a sacrifice to Allah, and it was accepted from one of them, but it was not accepted from the other. The latter, I will surely kill you, said the former. Indeed, Allah only accepts from the righteous who fear him. Verse 19 should raise your hand against me to kill me. I shall not raise my hand against you to kill you. Indeed, I fear Allah, Lord of the worlds. Verse 20. Indeed, I want you to obtain thereby my sin and your sin so you will be among the companions of the fire. And that is the recompense of wrongdoers. Verse 21. And his soul permitted to him the murder of his brother, so he killed him and became among the losers. Verse 22. Then Allah sent a crow searching in the ground to show him how to hide the disgrace of his brother. He said, O oh, woe to me! Have I failed to be like this crow and hide the body of my brother? And he became of the regretful. Verse 23. Because of that, we decreed upon the children of Israel that whoever kills a soul unless for a soul or for corruption, done in the land. It is as if he had slain mankind entirely. And whoever saves one, it is as if he had saved mankind entirely and our messengers had certainly come to them with clear proofs. Then indeed many of them, even after that, throughout the land, were transgressors. Verse 24, indeed. The penalty for those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and strive upon earth, cause corruption is none, but that they be killed or crucified, or that their hands and feet be cut off from opposite sides, or that they be exiled from the land. That is for them a disgrace in this world, and for them in the hereafter is a great punishment, Verse 25, except for those who return, repenting, before you apprehend them, and know that Allah is forgiving and merciful. Surah Al-Hijjar, 1526-44, verse 26, and we did certainly create man out of clay from an altered black mud. Verse 27, and the jinn we created before from scorching fire. Verse 28, and mention when your Lord said to the angels, I am creating a human being from clay, from molded mud. Verse 29. So when I have proportioned him and breathed into him of my created soul, then fall down to him in prostration. Verse 30. So the angels prostrated, all of them entirely. Verse 31. Accept Iblis. He refused to be with those who prostrated. Verse 32. Allah said, O Iblis, what is the matter with you that you are not with those who prostrate? Verse 33. He said, Never would I prostrate to a human whom you created out of clay from an altered black mud. Verse 34. The lust said, Then get out of it, for indeed, you are expelled. Verse 35. And indeed, upon you is the curse until the day of recompense. Verse 36. He said, My Lord, then reprieve me until the day they are resurrected. Verse 37. Allah said, So indeed, you are of those reprieved. Verse 38. Until the day of the time well known. Verse 39, he said, My Lord, because you have put me in error, I will surely make disobedience attractive to them on earth, and I will mislead them all. Verse 40, except among them your chosen servants.
verse 41. Allah said, This is a path of return to me. Verse 42. My servants, no authority will you have over them, except those who follow you of the deviators. Verse 43. And indeed, hell is the promised place for them all. Verse 44. It has seven gates. For every gate is of them a portion designated. Now let's delve into some hadiths by Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him, mentioning Prophet Adam, alayhi salam. 1. Hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari. Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet said Allah created Adam, making him 60 cubits tall. When he created him, he said to him, Go and greet that group of angels, and listen to their reply. For it will be your greeting, and the greeting of your offspring Adam greeted them and heard their reply. So he said, Peace upon you. They replied, Peace upon you and mercy of Allah. So they increased in mercy of Allah. The Prophet added, So, whoever will enter paradise will be of the shape and picture of Adam. Since then the creation of Adam's offspring, that is, stature of human beings, is being diminished continuously up to the present time. 2. Hadith from Sahih Muslim Abu Harada reported, Allah's Messenger, said, When Allah created Adam, he touched his back, and every person that he created from him, he touched his back. And he recited to him the whole of his book. 3. Hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari Narrated by Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, said, When any human being is born, Satan touches him at both sides of the body with his two fingers, except Jesus, the son of Mary, whom Satan tried to touch but failed, for he touched the placenta cover instead. 4. Hadith from Sahih Muslim Abu Harada reported, Allah's Messenger said, When Allah created Adam, he stroked his back and brought forth from it his offspring, and he said, I have created these for paradise, and I don't mind. Hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, Allah created Adam, making him sixty cubits tall. When he created him, he said to him, Go and greet that group of angels, and listen to their reply, for it will be your greeting and the greeting of your offspring. Adam greeted them and heard their reply, and said, If anyone could live as long as those angels, then all the troubles of life would be insignificant for him. So the angel said, O oh Adam, you are right, and your offspring will live as long as the period allotted for them. 6. Hadith from Sahih Muslim, Abu Harairah reported, Allah's Messenger. When Allah created Adam, he left him for some time as he had left him, and then he ordained death for him. 7. Hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated by Abu Harairah, Allah's Messenger, said, Adam and Moses argued with each other. Moses said to Adam, O oh Adam, you are our father who disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. Then Adam said to him, O oh Moses, Allah favored you with his talk, talked to you directly. And he wrote the Torah for you with his own hand. Do you blame me for action which Allah had written in my fate 40 years before my creation? So Adam confuted Moses. Adam confuted Moses, the prophet added, repeating the statement three times. As we reflect on the story of Prophet Adam, alayhi salam, we discover profound lessons. The theme of repentance, the consequences of succumbing to temptation, and the journey of redemption resonate universally. Adam's story becomes a mirror reflecting our own struggles, shortcomings, and the path to seeking Allah's forgiveness. In concluding our exploration of Prophet Adam, alayhi salam, let's carry forward the wisdom embedded in his story. Let's strive for a life of obedience, learn from our mistakes, and seek Allah's forgiveness with sincere repentance. As we close this chapter, I invite you to join us in the next episode, where we'll continue our journey through the prophets by exploring the fascinating life of Prophet Nu. Alay salam. I extend a warm invitation to you to show your support by gently tapping the like button below the video. Your thoughts, questions, and suggestions hold immense value, so please take a moment to share them in the comments. Consider sharing this content with those who've recently embraced Islam, as it could be a source of inspiration and knowledge for them. To stay connected and receive a steady flow of insightful content, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Your subscription not only enhances your experience, but also contributes to building a vibrant community. Expressing gratitude for your engagement and presence, I wish each of you a day filled with serenity and joy, guided by the principles of the Islamic way. Thank you for being an integral part of this enriching journey.